Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone, Catherine here. Um, we're just going to wait a few seconds for uh, people to log on. Um, thank you so much for coming to our new format. Uh, it's uh, pretty exciting to, um, to be doing this. Uh, we're here at um, Images, Film and Video. Uh, graceful, gracefully, uh, Louis has allowed us to um, film this TED Talk here. I call it my TED Talk. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, I, um, I planned to do this talk and when we realized we couldn't do it at the Gladstone, which is, I hope Aaron's here, which is where we were going to do it, um, I was kind of relieved. I thought, oh good, I just have to do it on a Zoom call and I can have my little notes there. And, um, but I thought, no, no, I wanted to do this like a TED Talk and so... Uh, Louis helped, Louis and his team helped me set up, I um, mean you can't see it but there are a lot of cameras here, uh, and a bunch of people who are helping me and uh, I'm really, I'm really grateful for that. So um, we'll just wait a few more seconds uh, for people to log on. It's so different because I can't see anybody so I'm, I'm literally imagining the Gladstone Hotel with um, all of you sitting there and um, hopefully with big smiles on your faces. I did want to mention um, a thank you to the Gladstone Hotel who was our, our sponsor and unfortunately we couldn't produce all our events there. So, um, but I don't know if many of you know, the Gladstone's going under a huge renovation. So hopefully we will be back there and um, we can do our uh, seminars um, live. So without further ado, I think we should um, get this going. So what's going to happen is um, I'm going to have uh, my mentor and mindset coach, Catherine Farkason. Uh, my dream was to be able to do this talk, but to have her actually introduce me. That means a lot to me. So she's going to do a little introduction and then I will get on with the talk. So here we go. My name is Catherine Farkason. I've known Catherine Lash for about 13 years. Actually, now that I think about it, I, uh, I think I've known of Catherine Lash a lot longer because I used to have a wedding photography business and all I ever wanted was for Catherine Lash to know who Catherine Farkason is. <laughs> And for those of you who have been in the wedding company long enough, you know how big of a deal it is when you get realized by Catherine Lash. Her name is used interchangeably with an understanding of success, with an understanding of being a values-based business, an understanding of this is not just uh, being associated with people who are, 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 you know, creating things for the wedding industry and, you know, trying this and that and the other to make money. It's actually about being part of a community of heart-based businesses that understand that what they're doing is so much more than, than what it might seem. Our businesses are not about the, the act of the exchange that's happening in the business, but actually about um, participating in one of the most important days in people's lives and understanding what their financial and time investment includes and making sure that we're delivering in, in all the areas, not just in service, but in experience. And it's a very saturated industry. And there are a ton of wedding shows I mean, it's not difficult to be a part of a wedding show, but to be a part of Catherine Lash's wedding show and to be a part of Catherine Lash's wedding community is a privilege. And I'm so excited to be here right now to introduce Catherine before her talk because I think it's really important to reflect how that privilege came to be because Catherine created this community what we are experiencing right now with the reputation that, that we get by being in association with Catherine and the wedding company and with each other here is because of all of the work that Catherine has done before. You know, um, 
I am a mindset coach now. And one of the things that I love talking about the most is about goals and about the process of getting goals and bringing them to life. And one of the main premises is that everything that is created in form has to be first created in the mind. You don't just, we just look at things with our five senses and we look at things in form and we think, oh, this thing is there now. So this is such an important moment to be able to talk about, well, where did it come from? Because what we are benefiting from right now is all of the time and attention, and I mean time and attention, that Catherine has put in to you over these years. Catherine is obsessed with your experience in, in the good way. <laughs> She's obsessed with thinking about um, what, what does my community need? How can I service them better? What's coming down the road for these people? And how can I help them get ahead of it? She's always thinking about servicing you better. And you can, anyone who's been here longer than a year will know that she has been evolving always one or two, three beats ahead of you. She's always ahead of you so that you have somewhere to arrive to. It is remarkable. And it is a skill that is practiced and that Catherine has become very, very, very good at. She was able to um, do that as a photographer for her clients. And then as she moved into the wedding company, she started to do that for you. And if anyone has been watching her, um, the industry and, and the wedding company within it, as I have, you would have seen the way that it has evolved and matured as the industry has. It has changed dramatically in the last decade. And there is no place better to look for and lean on to see what is happening in the industry for Canadians than with Catherine. And I'm so happy to be able to be here right now to acknowledge Catherine for doing this because the, the, the community that you get to participate in right now, especially in 2020, when the world was rocked, the wedding industry was rocked, but because of all that work that Catherine has already done, she was able to step into it and say, I got you, I got you, and let me service you and provide all the things that you need during this time so that you can launch into 2021. So, I mean, she was immediately masterminding with you guys. She's bringing in all these speakers. She's bringing in all these services to help you get your head around what's happening so that you can live your goals out next year and beyond. It is a thankless job. It looks on the surface like, oh, it's a community with a membership and a show. But that's not what it is. That's only what it is in the form. And what she does in the expression of that form is very much the same as what I was describing of what you do in your businesses, where it's not about the transaction, it's not about the thing, it's about all the un, unseen things that come along with the service. It is an absolute honor and privilege to be in this community and, and, and to be led by Catherine. I can't think of anyone better. I can't think of anyone who cares more than she does. I can't think of anyone who is so passionate than she is. And also I'll add creative. Catherine is so creative in her thinking. She never wants to repeat anything. She never wants to create the predictable and she never wants to do what is good enough. She's always trying to outdo herself. She's always trying to wow you. She's always trying to um, make you realize and feel how special you are and how special this community is and how special this industry is. I feel like Catherine is an example of, of what it means when we say that we have heart-led businesses. And when you're associating with her and you're attracted to being a part of that community, there's no... Um, there's no amount that you can put on what it means because of who else it attracts. I mean, I know when I was part of the wedding company as a wedding photographer, I, I wanted to be associated with you guys, the cream of the crop, 
because, because I know that any time I was referred by any of you or that I could refer you to any one of my clients, that I knew that they would be met with the same level of, of um, integrity and with the same values and um, with the same, yeah, integrity is really the best word. And you can't put a price on that. There is nothing more valuable than that. And there's also nothing um, that can't come out of anything except something that's completely genuine and authentic and heart-led. So even though you might not see it, what you are feeling here and what you are benefiting from every single month is all of the hours and the energy and the love that Catherine has put in to thinking about you and your clients and your families and your businesses and your future. And that is where the real work comes in. Anyone can throw a business together, but to, to be committed to it in the way that Catherine is so that other people benefit to the degree that you do is um, remarkable. So I'm so, um, just so honored to be able to, to acknowledge Catherine here for a second and, um, and to be able to share in this message with you because uh, it's very rare when, someone, when someone's in the position that she's in, it's very rare for them to be seen. And that's, that's part of the, uh, the deal of being the kind of leader that she is. You don't, it's a thankless job. You don't get to be seen for what's really going on because like I said, what people only see is the product. They don't know. So I know because I've had the privilege of being able to work with Catherine now uh, in the wedding company originally and then also in my coaching business now. And um, you are being led by one of the most remarkable teachers. And uh, if you haven't seen that already, hopefully you'll see that now that I've brought it to your attention. Um, even just listening to her talk, what you're about to hear, um, you could listen to it over and over and over and over, and you will um, hear something new every single time. So without further ado, allow me to say congratulations, first of all, to Catherine for creating this amazing community over all of these years. Um, it's only getting better, and I, and I can't wait to see where the industry grows because of you. And um, so I pass this over to you. Enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy. You're going to love this talk, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was, um, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for that and also for you getting me to this moment. Uh, you've been a, a, a huge part of, um, of my progress in the last two years. So thank you so much. Um, I just want to start my talk by saying uh, there's something really interesting. I decided to do this talk before COVID. And um, what has happened during COVID, what I have watched all of you go through um, has been quite amazing and is kind of a gift to this talk because um, you've actually done some of the things already that I, have, that I am going to touch on. And because you've experienced some of it, I think this talk will um, really resonate with you because of that experience and the, and the knowledge that you've already gotten out of the last few months uh, of COVID. So, so we're gonna use this to our, our advantage today. Uh, the, the reason I decided to do this talk is because I did a lesson with Catherine called Greener Pastures. And I've done two years of mindset study with Catherine and we have had many lessons. But I have to be honest with you, Greener Pastures is the only lesson I actually remember by name um, because it had the most impact on me. I have read it many, many times. And there was a call to action at the end that, um, uh, that I actually took some action on. There's a story in Greener Pastures and it relates to the um, title of this talk. It's about an African farmer who um, hears of settlers who are out there making lots of money um, uh, finding diamonds. He decides that that's the opportunity that he wants. 
and uh, he wants to be rich like them. So he sells his farm and uh, is in search of um, diamonds. Unfortunately, as the story goes, he ends up broke and alone. Now, the gentleman who bought the farm, he was by the stream one day and finds a really unique object. He picks the object up and he realized that uh, it's actually a diamond and he ends up owning the world's largest diamond mine. You will see me reference, you will hear me reference uh, this story and it will become much clearer um, as I go on. We are all striving to be leaders. We are striving to be leaders of ourselves. We are trying to reach our dreams and our goals. There are, there are two qualities of leaders that I really want to touch on today. The first quality is that leaders, and when we lead ourselves, we always have to be moving forward. We always, we have to come up with a daily practice something that we do every day that keeps us moving forward. These come in many varieties. I am a reader. In the mornings, I read. People work out, people journal, people do many, many different things. But the key is that, lead, that when we are leading ourselves, we have a daily practice that keeps us centered and moving forward. The other one is my favorite. Uh, leaders of our leaders, people who can lead themselves, have the ability to harvest ideas from within. And that is the main topic of the talk today. If we are not, if we are not harvesting from within our ideas, if we are not coming up with new ideas, we are just repeating our same actions and our thoughts. And that is not moving forward. Ideas are exactly like diamonds. They are gifts, they are valuable, they are hidden, and here's the catch, they take a lot of work to get to. So, so how do we generate new ideas? And what does a successful, sustainable idea look like? If there's anything you're gonna write down, this is, this is the point that you need to write down. A, a successful, sustainable idea takes you somewhere you have never been before. Me doing this TED Talk today, I call it a TED Talk, is the perfect example. When I thought that I could sit down in the comfort of my home and do this as a Zoom call, I had this great relief and I told myself, no, you cannot do this. You need to take yourself somewhere that you have never been before. And this is a place I have never been before. Also, a sustainable, successful idea you will connect with emotionally and you will connect, connect to it with the experiences and the knowledge that you already have, which means we can only harvest them from within ourselves. We cannot go to greener pastures. So the question is, how do we find these new ideas? How do we go deep within ourselves? And the solution to that is actually really, really easy. We study. We study what we love. We study the industry we are in. And we study the thing that inspired the business, business that you are running today. There's a saying that if you, if you do what you love, you will be successful. I disagree with that. I love doing, I love the doing part of my business, but when I'm in the doing, I've already done the hard work. I'm sitting in my sunlit studio, I'm editing photos, I'm sewing the last bead on a dress. The doing is the reward for the work that you have put into it. It's the studying that is gonna move you forward that is gonna take you to a place that you have never been before. Okay, we're back to <laughs> how do we study what we love? Well, there are, again, there are many, many ways you can do that. Um, I, as I said, I do it by reading. Some people do it by watching documentaries. 
when you commit to a daily practice of studying what you love, you will probably have multiple ways that you do it. But the best way is to start with, I think, something that is accessible to everybody. And I am going to assume everybody has a book on their shelves that is about what they actually love and what they do. So, Louis, could you put that slide up, please? There's a uh, quote <clears throat> that I love by Ruth Bader Gibbs Ginsburg. Um, Reading is the key that opens doors to many good things in life. Reading shaped my dreams, and more reading helped me make my dreams come true. There couldn't be a more incredible human being to say that. And if she says it, it's got to be true. So reading. Now, here's the catch. I know we love to all sit and read a good book by the fire, but this type of reading is not passive. This type of reading is something that you must work at. This type of reading has to be scheduled into your workday. It has to be part of your calendar because I guarantee you it's actually the most important work you will do all day. So how do we get the best return on our reading? How do we get the best return on all that time we're going to spend? And I have to tell you, I'm not telling you to spend hours reading. 30 minutes a day is is plenty because what I'm going to explain to you later will bring you to your action points. So, so how do we get the best return? Well, reading anything, studying for school, studying big concepts, uh, we have to break things down. So I, um, I use a technique called mind mapping. Um, do you mind putting the second slide up? Thank you. Mind mapping is, uh, is a new concept for me. Mind mapping is something that takes you from a really big concept or topic and narrows it down to basic to actionable items. Um, I've got this, I call this the fancy mind map because hopefully your mind maps actually won't even look like this. They'll be much more creative and mine are definitely not this neat and tidy. Um, but I'm just going to read uh, from the side here. To mind map, we begin in the middle of a blank page. Write a single word or drawing a, sim- as, or drawing a simple image of the central idea from which you wish to start. Begin branching out from the central idea by developing related subtopics around it. Allow yourself to explore. And I just want to emphasize that word explore because this is where you can let your mind go and this is where you can connect what you already know or you are emotionally connected with and go from there. So allow yourself to explore all the ideas which come to you. Repeat the process for the subtopics by generating additional images, words, and numbers which associate with them. And here's the thing, you keep going. The real value in this process comes from exploring and developing upon your subtopics and associations. You may be surprised at where this process can lead you daily. Um, Thank you, you can take that slide down now. Get rid of, nope, keep the glasses. (laughs) Um, so, so that's a method that I started to use and, um, I have found it really helpful because what happens is I go from a large concept down into a to doable list for my day. And that right now, when I show that screen, I know that that seems, uh, very mechanical. So I thought what I would do is to prove my theory or my mind map, um, activity, I thought I would illustrate one and uh, pick a subject that we're all familiar with. So I picked the wedding gown. Um, To do this, I would uh, picked a book by Christian Dior, which happened to be in my living room, and I thought I would start reading. So um, if you can pull up the next slide, please. So what I did was I put Christian Dior in the middle. This is my big uh, topic. I started reading, and the first, (laughs) the title on the book was Designer of Dreams, which relates to weddings. (laughs) Then I put dreams in one of the boxes. 
I kept reading. This is literally in the first paragraph. Christian Dior was a reactionary. That piqued my interest. So I let my mind explore and I thought, well, what, what today are we reacting to? Well, let's just say there's a lot today. I put COVID, Black Lives Matter, micro weddings. I branched off from there. What has happened for me in COVID? Zoom calls. Hmm. These initial meetings on Zoom call. That's saving me a lot of time. Next idea, change website to reflect new consultation process. So I went from Christian Dior, reactionary, COVID, Zoom calls, today's to-do list, change website. This kind of thing really <laughs> excites me. Um, then I went to Black Lives Matter, um, reactionary. How did I re react? Diversity, collaboration with Caribbean vendors, research traditional Caribbean uh, wedding gowns. Kept going, micro weddings. Okay, what's happening with micro weddings? What's someone willing to spend on a, um, a wedding gown? What are the venues that they're happening in? Um, are they backyards, banquet halls? And then uh, affordable line, sell online, set up online stores. I know this sounds like a lot, but this is, this is the exploration. This is the exploration of uh, these ideas coming from a bigger concept. This is how reading, starting to read, pulling these words out. The thing I love about these mind maps is nobody will have the same mind map. Everyone's, everyone will be different. So I kept going. Uh, I started reading um, Hourglass Silhouette. That resonates with me. That's the, that's the uh, body type that I have. Separates. And then they connect to, and then that idea connected to selling online. The, again, from the main concept, and then we have this to-do list on the side. If you, can, if you can start to do this practice, then you can take one of these smaller ideas and you can break that smaller idea. Put that in the middle and break that down. Thank you, you can take the slide down. I know that seems a lot, but if you can start by just picking up a book about, this is the beauty of it, I'm not asking you to pick up a book about Business 101. This is about getting back to studying what you love. We are in uncertain times right now, but I'm not even saying use this during this time. This is something we need to practice daily. This is something we need to do to keep us moving forward even when there is no pandemic. When we see ourselves going to somebody else's greener pasture, when we feel like we don't have the ideas, we feel like we are manic with too many ideas. To really hone in your ideas, this is a really um, helpful way. Um, so I just, want to, I just want to conclude by saying, when you're feeling like you're in the middle of a tornado with ideas or uncertainty, just remember that in the middle it's calm. And if you can just consciously settle yourself down, pick up a book, and start harvesting your own ideas, you will keep moving forward and things, and things will just work out, but we just have to remember to ground ourselves all the time. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. That was my, that was my talk. So um, and right underneath, you should see a link to a Zoom call. So let's just hop on the Zoom call and um, we can do a little Q&A if anybody wants to ask me about it. I have two uh, copies of Big Magic that I'm going to give away by Elizabeth Gilbert, which is all about ideas. It's a spectacular book. So uh, I'm going to give away two copies of that. So Louis is just rolling my computer out so that we can do this. And um, yeah, let's see you on Zoom in, in two seconds. Am I still on?